Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Ryzen 9 3900X's boost clock behavior in various scenarios. One of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is because ever since the 3rd gen Ryzen CPUs came out, there has been a lot of buzz within the PC hardware community that these processors aren't able to hit their advertised boost clocks. Countless threads on this topic have been posted to various online forums, Reddit, YouTube, and other tech outlets reporting on the issue. I've even seen some owners express their frustration and confusion in regards to not being able to reach those advertised frequencies despite having adequate cooling and a high-end motherboard. It is a strange phenomenon, and I too have seen similar behavior with my 3900X as well. So I decided that I'd contribute to the discussion by showing you guys some data I collected, which will allow you guys to see the boost clock behavior in different circumstances, such as gaming, productivity, synthetic benchmarks, and a light browsing workload. Before that, I thought I'd give you guys a rundown of my test system specifications, drivers, which BIOS version I'm using, and any tweaks I've made within Windows. For my Ryzen 9 3900X, I have it running with PBO and AutoOC enabled, with a plus 200MHz offset to the boost and scalar level 3 in the BIOS. The CPU is cooled by a Noctua NHD15 dual tower air cooler. For my motherboard, I've got the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master with the F5i BIOS, which has the Agiza 1003 ABB microcode update. For the RAM, I've got 16GB of G-Scale Trident Z clocked at 3600MHz with tuned CL14 timings. For this GPU, I've got an EVGA GTX 1080 Ti Black Edition which has a plus 100MHz offset to the core and plus 300MHz offset to the memory. In regards to Windows, I've got the 1903 update version running with the Ryzen Balanced Power Plan selected. For the X570 chipset, I've also got the latest version from AMD, which was released on the 19th of August. For full system specs, you guys can check the video description down below. Now, in order to capture what was going on with the CPU cores and what they were boosting to, I was using hardware info to monitor and log the data with a 1000 millisecond polling rate set. So the first chart we'll be taking a look at was the data I captured during a Cinebench R20 multi-core run. Cinebench R20 is a very heavy synthetic benchmark, which makes the CPU render an image using path tracing. During the run, you guys can see that all 12 cores on the 3900X were hanging around 4.1 to 4.15 GHz during the entire duration of it. No cores went above that. There weren't any spikes to 4.6 GHz, where the CPU decided to lock down all the cores to around the same frequency. During a heavy all-core workload like this, the boost behavior displayed by the CPU is to be expected, but I thought maybe there would have been a few cores or two boosting beyond what the other cores were doing. The boost behavior is also dependent on the temperatures of the CPU, so I also have a chart showing you guys just that. And as you guys can see from here in the duration of the run, the CPU starts off fairly warm right at 78 degrees Celsius and gradually becomes hotter and reached 81 degrees near the end of the run. So with the CPU running this hot during the workload, it only makes sense that it would scale back to frequencies in order to keep the thermals under control without sacrificing too much performance. And that's probably why we weren't able to see the processor have some of its cores boost the speed of a couple cores to beyond 4.2 GHz. But what happens when we shift our focus from an all-core test to a single-threaded test? With our Cinebench R20 single-threaded test, we can see different behavior from the processor more in line with what one would expect from a scenario like this. So here you guys will see a lot more variation in regards to the frequencies from each of the different cores as most of them will be spending their time doing nothing or dealing with some background Windows processes while Cinebench likes to switch between a few cores during a single threaded test. I'm not sure why during the test it seems to switch between a few different cores since it is single threaded, but as you guys can see from the chart here, the ones that were active do hit 4.55 GHz. We're close, that's a 50 MHz deficit from what the box says. It's really close, which shouldn't really impact single threaded performance too much. It appears as though cores 1, 2, and 4 during the single threaded test were hitting 4.55 GHz, and for the most part, were staying around 4.4 to 4.5 GHz. While the rest of the cores, which weren't really doing anything, were hanging around from 3 GHz to 4.4 GHz. This is the kind of boost behavior I'd expect from a single threaded workload. It's just weird though, because despite having PBO on and AutoSC enabled, we're still not hitting 4.6 GHz, let alone hitting anything above that. 
And really, in the first place, it shouldn't matter if those features are enabled, because they're overclocking features. You shouldn't have to overclock to hit what the box says, and what's being advertised, whether it's an all-core overclock, PBO, or tinkering around with the base clock. Now, while synthetic benchmarks are all fine and good for comparing scores and measuring overclocks, they don't necessarily reflect a real-world scenario. So speaking of a real-world scenario, I included some data I collected while rendering out a video in Vegas Pro 17 at 4K 60fps, which was a short gameplay clip. While that was going on, we can see that at the beginning of the graph, there are some cores which were operating at around 3.6 GHz mark, while a couple of the cores were around 4.35 GHz. Then, as I start the render, we immediately see all the cores jump to the 4.2 GHz mark, and then right after that, come down to around 4.125 to 4.15 GHz mark. Then for the majority of the render, the cores seem to be hanging around those frequencies with some occasional jumps to 4.175 and 4.2 GHz, but nothing really beyond that. This kind of boost behavior is actually similar to what we saw from our all-core Cinebench R20 test. I noticed that Vegas Pro does like to scale with a lot of threads, so seeing the processor behave this way is to be expected in an all-core workload like this. Anyways, moving on, we'll be taking a look at two games with the first one being Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, I wanted to use this game to test boost frequencies because it's a recent AAA title that is fairly demanding and utilizes multiple threads of the CPU. I wouldn't really pay too much attention to the beginning of the chart as that was data which was logged when I was still in the menus, so not really much happening there. Once the benchmark starts, which I believe was around the 15 second mark, we can see that there are a few cores which have settled to around 4.175 to 4.2 GHz, while the rest seem to be bouncing back and forth between 3.3 GHz to 4.1 GHz, so those cores would be the cores that the game really isn't using. There were some cores which had hit 4.225 GHz, but nothing beyond that. In regards to temperatures, and here we're seeing some decent figures, the biggest spike we had was at 67 degrees Celsius, and that was at the beginning while I was in the menus, whereas for the most part the CPU was sitting in the mid 50 to low 60s range, with some spikes to 65 degrees Celsius. Now here I would expect a slightly higher all-core boost, and I would have liked to see the actual cores which were active to be boosting to 4.6 GHz, or at the very least close to it, but that wasn't happening either. They were still remaining quite passive, and there wouldn't even be a few cores boosting to say 4.4 or 4.5 GHz. Now let's move on to our next title, and here I've used the Elder Scrolls Online to test boost behavior. The reason why I've used this title specifically is because it's pretty reliant on the CPU, but is notoriously single threaded. I've mentioned this before, but with ESO, you can play at 4K with maxed out settings, and your CPU would still be the major bottleneck. When we take a look at our chart here, we can see similar boost behavior as to what we saw with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which was a more thread-heavy game. Most of the cores here seem to be locked in at around 4.175 GHz to 4.2 GHz, regardless of whatever I was doing in the game, which consisted of selling in cities, playing some PvP battlegrounds, or crafting. Doesn't matter, the boost behavior didn't change regardless of the CPU load. When we take a look at the CPU temps, what really makes this more of a head-scratcher is the fact that the figures here are really nothing to be concerned about at all. This is nowhere near the point at which I'd say the processor will start to experience thermal throttling. So, I don't understand why it's being so passive in regards to the boost clocks. You would think that in a single-threaded game like this, where really a few cores out of the 12 are active, the boost frequencies would be higher, but but instead, it just seems to lock up at around the same level for everything. The last chart I wanted to show you guys was the boost behavior that was observed during a basic light workload. This workload consisted of having a web browser open with multiple tabs, one which had a video playing, Discord open, Microsoft Word, Excel, and Outlook open as well. During this workload, you guys can see there's a lot of fluctuation in regards to the boost clocks. We can see some cores when they're not really active, slowing back down to 2.2 GHz, and we actually do see a few cores hit 4.575 GHz quite a few times. In this case, boost behavior like this makes sense because it's not like the cores will be loaded 100%, as many will even be asleep not doing anything, and temps should be relatively down as well. Since the overall load on the CPU is very minimal here, we're seeing the processor boost a few cores near the advertised boost frequency, but it's still not 4.6 GHz. So, after seeing all these charts and being able to observe the 3900X's boost behavior in various scenarios, 
there's definitely a lot of weirdness going on here. And workloads which are more demanding on the CPU, where many of the cores are loaded such as rendering a video for example, or playing a modern AAA title that takes advantage of, multi of a multi-core CPU, we can see that the processor is not really showing high boost clocks. In two out of the three lightly threaded workloads, we saw the processor boosting a few of those cores to frequencies where you should expect them. However, when it comes to gaming, I think that the CPU is being a bit too passive here. Thermals aren't an issue for me, and what I'd say was even more concerning was the fact that both games pretty much showed similar figures, which doesn't make sense to me as one really only cares about single core performance, while the other is multi-threaded. Regardless, as mentioned before with temps being a non-issue, why is the processor regressing its boost clocks to that extent? Whether PBO is on or off also makes no difference, which is also kind of disappointing to see as this was a feature that was discussed prior to the third gen launch. Robert Halleck from AMD even made a video explaining the feature and talked about plugging in an extra 200 megahertz that will allow you to essentially overclock your CPU Granted, you had the cooling and power delivery headroom. Therefore, in theory, having a good CPU with a high-end motherboard and good VRMs should allow the processor to stretch its legs further, right? Well, if a Noctua NHD15, which is arguably the best air cooler out there, and that even competes with high-end radiators, plus an Oris Master motherboard aren't enough, then... I really don't know what is. What's sad though is that there wasn't a single instance where the processor had hit 4.6 GHz. The boost figure what that was on the box, never, not even with any auto OC features. Now whether this is an issue with the processors or there is something wrong with the motherboard, I'm not sure. It could very well come down to the Yagiza updates not being adequate and hopefully things get ironed out with the future update. I'm more so leaning towards this being a MIOS or motherboard issue. There have been some users who have even reported Agiza 1002 gave them higher clocks compared to 1003, along with different motherboards resulting in different behavior. Steve over at Hardware Unboxed recently made a video showcasing his 3800X running on multiple AM4 motherboards and the results do vary. It's a great video, I highly recommend checking it out. It could be that with the newer update something was broken, but there have been some reports going around that this was intentionally done by AMD to ensure longevity of the hardware, which is concerning. What also doesn't bode well for them is the fact that they've remained pretty silent on the matter and haven't really released a statement in regards to why so many can't hit the advertised boost clocks out of the box with without having to resort to any sort of overclocking methods. It is a bit disappointing to see, I'll be honest with you guys, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see and hopefully there is a solution to this in the near future. For now though, I'm going to continue to enjoy my 3900X. Don't get me wrong, it's still a magnificent piece of hardware that offers impeccable performance in all areas of computing. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and enjoyable. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description for my other videos and ways to support the channel. If you're interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.